Do you want an amazing marriage? Are you ready to take your marriage to the next level? Then stick around for your Marriage Matters podcast with Marriage Coach Lynn. Let's put some fun and sizzle into your relationship. Today, we'll talk about two books by Gary Chapman, Things I Wish I'd Known Before We Got Married, and The Marriage You've Always Wanted. The first book was entertaining to read as someone who's been married for many years. I liked how the author talked about his first few months of marriage. He noticed in a kitchen that the cupboards would often be open, as well as the silverware drawer. He discovered that his wife didn't close a drawer or cabinet when she was finished getting something. He told her about this, and that didn't work. He asked her and reminded her. Nothing changed. Then he would slam the drawers shut to try to get her to remember. Nothing happened. Finally, after six months, he realized this was just something quirky about her and he simply closed the drawer himself and smiled when he saw that it was left open. Then it never bothered him. This was a good story about accepting your partner and not making a big deal out of something that is minor in life. The chapters in Things I Wish I'd Known Before We Got Married include the following topics, plus more. Being in love is not an adequate foundation for building a successful marriage. Romantic love has two stages. There's some truth to the phrase, like mother, like daughter, and like father, like son. Other chapters include how to solve disagreements without arguing. Apologizing is a sign of strength. Forgiveness is not a feeling, it's a decision and choice. He talks about marrying into a family when you get married and says that personality profoundly influences behavior and that mutual sexual fulfillment is not automatic. An important chapter for today's millennials getting married, having a plan for handling money. I read some research that the younger generation getting married today is the first in history that isn't phased or bothered by having debt when they enter marriage. Rather than delve into these topics, I will leave it to you to take a look at this book and encourage you to put this on your list as a possible engaged or wedding gift for friends and relatives. The Marriage You've Always Wanted is the second book I'd like to mention today. Chapman starts this book with a chapter title called, Why Won't They Change? The secret here is to find fault with yourself. Ask what's wrong with me, not what's wrong with my partner. You can make a list and ask your partner to help you make a list. Ask God's forgiveness and your partner's forgiveness. Your partner doesn't make you miserable or happy. You choose your attitude, behavior, and worldview. In order to have the marriage you've always wanted, you need to know what love means. It means editing yourself, not entertaining all of your emotions, but letting some of them go away. It means choosing words of kindness, even if you've been mistreated. It means acting with loving deeds and choosing to be unselfish when you might want to be selfish. It means accepting imperfections and irritations. Have you learned this yet? Quote, neither husbands nor wives can have their own way and a successful marriage at the same time, end quote. What does this mean? It means we must willingly accept each other's influence. We must yield to our spouse. We cannot be self-righteous or domineering and expect to have a happy spouse or relationship. We work as a team. The marriage you want is one in which listening skills are highly developed. I did a series on communication, so I'm not going to repeat listening skills here. One thing you'll notice when you develop solid listening skills is that in public, we don't converse with highly developed listening skills. Someone will say something, and most of the time, someone else will jump in and offer his or her experience, taking the conversation in a slightly new direction or sometimes a completely new direction, away from the original statement the first person said. For example, someone might say, I went to Italy on a two-week vacation. The next person might say, Awesome! I went three years ago. It's one of my favorite places. Did you get to go to Florence? 
A good listener might be quiet and not say anything at first and let the person continue or might say, tell me about it. As you will see, many people feel they have to ensure there are no moments of silence and that they believe there's a conversation flow when we avoid silence. That shouldn't be the goal. The goal is hearing someone out, letting them complete their thoughts without interruption or distraction. There's a good practical chapter in this book and it's titled, Who Takes Care of What? Chapman says a lot of hassle can be eliminated if people discussed some basics before getting married. A lot is based on assumptions. Who will be responsible for the household income and finances? Who will grocery shop, cook, make household repairs, clean the house, get the children to appointments? Does one of you have the desire to homeschool? And the partner might not even know this. Will the mom breastfeed for a few years, meaning she probably won't want to work outside the home? Does your partner know of these ideas and agree with them? Maybe you haven't thought of these things, but what are some of your general ideas of a life together? Is one of you adventurous and interested in moving around and traveling the world? Again, as we've said before, love doesn't carry us off into the sunset. There are practical considerations. And how about if you married at an older age, perhaps a second marriage? Were you familiar with all of the extended family issues, care of an elder parent, dynamics of stepchildren and their family needs, or for many, financial need? A lot of decisions will face you as you build your marriage, college debt, grad school, timing of having children, moving to a new city due to a job versus happiness in currently living near your extended family. As you develop oneness and unity, how does God and church fit into your life? How are decisions made in your marriage? I like this book because there are short chapters that get to the point. There are chapters on topics that can cause difficulty in many marriages, differences in sex, dealing with parents and in-laws, and financial interaction. I'm also looking at this book from a new perspective. As a parent of a newly married son, my role is to let my son and his wife tell me what he wants to do for the holidays, how he's living his life and establishing his household. I don't have expectations or pressure. I will accommodate their decisions. Married couples should have the full freedom to forge their own path. Thank you for joining me today and our discussion of things I wish I'd known before we got married and the marriage you've always wanted. So much of what we experience in our marriage is by design and choice. Please subscribe to this podcast and be sure to leave a rating or comments. And I encourage you to choose to make your marriage great.